The best place in the world is when you finally realize you have nothing to lose. What type of awakening happens when you have nothing to lose? It's just down to you and God. And you're, you're not sitting here protecting that old way. You're not protecting the cars in the garage or, you know, how big your house is or your bank account. You're just like finally living right on the edge with God. What um, is coming through to share is the dissolving of authority. You know, we, we look at authority as, you know, several different things, something we look up to, something we listen to, something we get orders from, right? You could think of the government is seen as authority, your parents are authority, right? A teacher, but also um, so many other things are authority. And one, one authority is your thoughts. Fear is authority, right? Like fear is a thing that comes in and stops you from listening to the truest you. And when you have fear, that, that controls you and tells you what to do. And I want to just offer you to be with what's actually here right now. And notice that on the highest truth, um, the thoughts are passing like clouds. And if you stay present, uh, fear will pass like clouds, right? Like, as you just sit here and be with what's really real, you might notice little lumps in your, in your energy. There might be little blocks. There might be some trauma. But if you listen long enough, they don't grab you anymore. Um, if you really sit here and ask yourself, what is the real permanent truth here? You'll notice that almost every single thing that isn't that truth will eventually move. Some of it might have a grab on you for a good 20 minutes, but then it will eventually move. You'll notice that your desire is authority, right? Like for some people, it's fine if you have this, but like the need to be on Facebook, the need to find a partner, you're not enough unless you find that part. That's your authority, right? Let really feel that like, I got to I got to find this thing. I got to fill this up with a partner. I got to fill this up with money. Is money a dissolving authority? And one of the things that October is going to be about is the dissolving of the things that you have perceived are authority over you without realizing you saw it as authority. You know? So you can let go of your grab of authority just with awareness and you will move to a frequency where it doesn't own you as much. And some of those things will be pulled from you and force you to see that, right? Like you might lose some money or you might lose a partner or you might lose something outside of you that you really thought was the answer. And and in the old days, what we did was we switched authority, right? Like in the old days, you weren't looking inward as much. So for me, like 20 years ago, right? Like you could lose a relationship and you just replace it with a new relationship, right? <laughs> like it'd be like, oh, that's the answer. So your authority was still outside of you, right? I'm going to find the answer here, right? Some people, by the way, might have the opposite. Their authority is the avoidance of connection, right? Because it's too dangerous, right? So the authority in your body could be trauma. It could be, you know, whatever. But the more you do this work, the more the external comes to light. So that brings up the internal. You stop looking at the external nearly as much as the internal. And then later, as you really do this work, you start to realize the external was actually also internal because if you meditate long enough, you'll notice like the person that you think left you was just an image in your head. You didn't lose anything. You just lost one of your thoughts <laughs> that you called that person or that money, right? You're not losing anything. Really think of that. You know, if you, you have 
something leave you, what seems like on the external, you then have an avatar of them on the internal that is still gra you're grabbing onto. That's kind of a mixture of, of them and one of your parents, right? <laughs> or both of your parents or whatever. And that's what you're scared to let go of. But if you really investigate deeper and deeper and deeper and listen to silence longer, that starts to not quite be that person. And it starts to be like, oh, is it that guy or my dad? Or is it that that woman or my mom or switch them up however you want? Is it, is it, oh, is it this person that I thought they were that's leaving? Because did I ever really know them? Right? The more you meditate, the more you listen to silence, the more you kind of investigate and you'll discover none of your fear is true. Right? It, all fear is, is a lack of investigating. <laughs> Do you, can you get that? Like, oh, I lost that person. I lost, this is going to happen. Oh, okay. Investigate that. If this happens, then what? And, and what, what have I decided that I am that I haven't looked at because you have all these great lies inside of your consciousness. And, and you haven't had to look at them that much because every time they started to come to the light, you could go to an addiction and now it doesn't work anymore. And, and you could just sit, if you listen long enough, none of your fear is true. Right, none of it, and I and I can already hear the defense of something that's true. But if you really do this work enough, even if you heard that you were going to be murdered tomorrow, you could do enough inner work to investigate what the fear is and uncover something huge. And, and what happens when you uncover something huge is where the world starts to get magical. See, when you investigate deep enough into the lie of your fear, you release something that was inside of your body that, that hadn't come to light. And, and once that's released, you don't have a fear of the outside. And the outside starts to change. Now, you can see this with things that you've done with you as the separate self. What do I mean by that? Have you ever been scared of something specific with one other person, and then you got over the fear, and then they changed? They didn't do the thing you were worried that they would do, or they didn't become the thing you were worried about? Well, what if that goes all the way to the whole world? What if we just need to investigate deeper? Right? And what if you truly clear your fear through investigation, through listening? Like really, really investigate. Like the world is trying so hard to close your eyes to your investigation right? We got to think about the effort made to keep you from investigating inside. Think about the effort made. Like how many grillions of dollars were put into advertising to get people to say a phrase or, or bring in sex or, 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 or bring in fear to, to, get you to look at them through this is how control is is made right how do i control you i got to get you to not look inside so you stay feeling in some incomplete and scared of what's outside i ha i have to get you to constant how do i do it i got to turn the world into an insane never ending arcade 
right? Where it's just goodies everywhere. I gotta, I gotta create. I mean, Facebook is a brilliant distraction, right? Because it never closes. Do you know what I mean by that? Like everything in the world has a beginning and end except for that. And weirdly, except for the eternal, right? <laughs> right. So there's a there's no ending to that. So you can kind of stay on that. And there have been a couple things that I miss about it. I've been off Facebook for two and a half years now, or two years. Like there's a couple people that I was like, I really would love to say hi to and miss and stuff like that that I don't know how to get to them other than that. And then at the same time, like overall, I've been liberating myself because by not having the ability to go to it, it forces me to investigate deeper inside. And the worst thing for the distracting outside world, the worst thing for the distracting outside world is your investigation inside. And guess what? The distracting outside world will have to start investigating too. Like, why do I want to distract this person so much? Why do I want so much more money than I have? Like, why am I never complete owning 10 countries? Why do I have to own the world? Do you get what I'm saying? And, and the worst thing for the outside is for you to be investigating the inside because then you'll lose your fear of things that you perceive control you. And then they can't control you. I mean, you do this work, you'll lose your fear of death. You'll lose your fear of your old life leaving. Really think about that. That's, that's a scary thing until you investigate and realize the old way you had your life was also a distraction from the truth of you. Your old life was an authority. Those moments when you go, I just wish it was like it was in 2010 or whatever, that's authority. Your past is an authority over you. Your future is an authority over you, whether it's a fantasy or fear, whether it's one day will be like this, and that'll be so much better. That's authority over you. Right? And what, what is this always here thing? And does it maybe communicate to you a new step? once you've gotten the authority that only exists inside of you. There's no authority outside of you. There's a ton of authority that you've handed over inside of you. You've handed yourself to the authority inside of you. You investigate that deeper and deeper and deeper. That authority goes. Nothing outside owns you. Nothing. You're just in this piece. And that part of you that kicks in right now and goes, he's not knowing the whole thing though, or yeah, we'll just say that we'll just sit and do nothing and then they'll take over and they'll come and no, they, they, I don't know that they will because you're creating a frequency that's true. And, and you can feel that right now you are starting to see through things that you gave authority to on the inside. We already see it on the outside. Do you, do you, do you realize at one point the news was just a fact to almost everybody? Like, think about that. At one point, like in the 80s, when Dan Rather said this and Tom Brokaw, oh, here's what's happening. It was just, that's, oh, that's what happened. Did you know that this week, CNN had less than a million viewers combined for the whole week? So external authorities already lost its grab. 
external authority has already lost its grab. It's just down to like our parents. <laughs> <laughs> like like a little bit left of that like it's just down to a few people right but but like seriously in the 70s and 80s it was just that was fact so now external authority has lost what's left is internal authority just the mind left going what do i do Oh, here's the solution. Just, just start to investigate the mind giving power to just scrambling. That's all that's left. Fear and scrambling, fixing, doing. So we already see it's gone on the outside. You don't even need to get, even if you still have an addiction to something on the outside, you still know too much and it's, it's gonna be gone. You're gonna let go. You're gonna let go in the next few weeks. Yeah, I, I already know the news and face it, it doesn't work. You'll lose that urge, you'll lose the need. So the, 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 the next week's investigation is the inside lies. Just the moments when you're just like this, just like you can feel it. Just that, what's this? Like you almost feel like something has taken over your inner peace and it's like this thing. All you gotta do is investigate that it's a lie too. Just all you gotta do is listen longer and it moves from something that's controlling you to something that you see. That's the end. And there stops being a you. There stops being a you that has to do it alone. There's, there's no more, that's, that's what's going. And you're done with authority having its power. And by the way, one way that it leaves is by getting really loud. So you'll notice that you'll have days this week where there's a freak out followed by a release. And if you, if you have a freak out happening, where if you're, if you're here, I want you to notice what the freak out's hitting. I don't care what it is. I don't care what you believe or know or have seen. It's hitting something inside of your body. It's actually outside of your body, but it's like a vest. It's hitting a you that doesn't know life without that trauma being unseen. You've been able to coast without hitting certain traumas. If you're hitting a trauma, get excited and just stay present. That something inside is being seen it's kind of like, imagine if you're digging through dirt and you're, it's like, oh, we just dig. That's all we do. And then you hit something metallic and you're like, what is that? That's always been there. But you're digging and you hit something metallic. Is that, I mean, is that an opening to a vault? Is that a treasure chest? It's always been there, but you didn't dig. You didn't investigate. So we've been able to keep our addictions on the outside big enough to not, not hit that. So if you're hitting that trauma wall, you gotta get really present and you have to know that the true you is, is birthing out of this. And imagine that that is a vest that's, that's just going to fall off. Just don't get too externally addicted to not feel it. Just feel like shit for a day. I felt major trauma Friday, but I have enough aw awareness in me. And there's times where I freak out too. Like I feel, I felt off and I go to 
a feeling of, of darkness and, and panic. And then also a higher me that just goes, I have no answer right now. Stay with it. I'm hitting deep trauma. Just be present. Friday, I had that. Can you walk around with that shovel hitting that metal thing and you just start to know it's there? Right? Just be present with it. We're in this, right? Like, yeah, it's Friday. I'm, I'm, exploring stuff, learning stuff, studying stuff, and felt trauma hit. And when you feel trauma, if I am about changing the external circumstance, I, I miss, I miss what's in the treasure. But at first, that's do you get this? At first, that's what we try to do. I, I, I'm shoveling. I hit a treasure chest. I can't go into the treasure chest. I got to just change the area on the outside or I need to make the, I need to get back out of the dirt and just make the, the land that I'm standing on more appealing. So go back to Facebook, go back to whatever. But then eventually it's like, I know that treasure's there. And, and what's needed to open the treasure? A new level of now, a new level of presence, emerging with a now that's bigger and deeper than the treasure exists, right? Like for instance, if I wanna go into this treasure, I now have to dig under it to pull it out. So what's required for me to dig under it? Leaving the shallow top and, and being becoming the dirt too, becoming present, with what's under it too and just sitting there and then you almost like move your entire energy around the treasure it's like that that exists in me like if i'm digging into the ground and i hit a treasure chest wasn't i only this top layer then but if I'm hitting a treasure chest, I'm also all of this. Do you get what I'm saying? Wasn't I only living on this small top layer my whole life? Wasn't I only just water skiing on top of the entire ocean and never understanding that I'm the whole thing? Wasn't my consciousness shrinking me to living in such a, a small achiever, fight or flight, addictive, small thing? That's what's being killed. You living in the lie of just living at whatever, 2% of you. Just, I'm going to just do it all myself. That's very small. But the treasure's not outside of me. It's inside of me. I'm all of this. So to open the treasure, I have to become the true frequency of myself. I have to meditate. I have to hear the whole thing. And I can't actively pry it open from the small me because this small me can't go that deep. The treasure is just a sign that I'm deeper than I'm used to being. So I have to say goodbye to the addictive small me and understand that I'm the whole thing. The treasure is not outside of me. It's not a wall that I got to get over here. It's inside of me. So I just have been disconnected from all of me. I've just lived habitually disconnected from all of me. We've been living a lie. We've been living shallow. You're the whole earth and you've only been living the first two feet of where you live and you're the whole planet. And you're like, there's this metal here that's crazy. I can't get through this. Just so you know, you're the whole planet, right? And you're, you, you're, you've been habitually staying in a smallness. And if you're in that smallness, you're very controllable. Authority has you because you're under the illusion. You're just this. 
Nothing controls you once you get you're the whole thing. Nothing. Because it is you. The totalitarian government is you. You are all of existence. You can meditate and feel the whole universe. You can feel the whole thing. In fact, it's easier to do. It's just hard for the habit. Right? Can you feel that? Can you feel that you're all of this? There's nothing that has control over you. Fear is the belief that you're the small thing. That's all it is. And keeping an eye attached to this first two feet in the ground versus I am all of this. Be present for the anger. What's amazing is these types of teachings have been around forever, but now living in the shallow is no longer sustainable. Like, it's hard to survive the next couple of years staying shallow. Staying the, the small, I am my money. You're in trouble if that's the case. You're so much more than that. I'm, I am that relationship. You're in trouble if that's the case because it's blocking your ability to see the whole thing. And imagine right now in this time, life is forcing the seeing of that. You cannot stay in your small survival two feet before the treasure level. Holy shit. And, and this requires the purging of all authority. I'm here to not even give authority to anything outside of me and be in my own work. And I don't wanna be an authority for you. I just wanna be alongside you. Like, don't get too caught in the, what do they say? What does that speaker say to mentally help me have enough hope to not have to go into my treasure? I gotta go into my treasure. I can't make you my authority. You can't make me your authority. Don't make any other speaker your authority. Don't make what they say your authority. The reason these oneness calls are so special is we're going to listen together and you're going to start to have your own specific, or you have been, and you get to have more specific magical awakenings directly. Directly. The old days of... of you know, it's interesting because there's a, there's a very good argument about like spiritual centers and churches being closed in this time. What if that's to get you also on a God perspective directly connected to it? Obviously, that would be great if people could have a place where they could worship. But what if life is going, cut out the middleman and directly connect? You don't need those places to connect. You will have your own experience in your own house, in your own car. You will have it however. So as it seems like a negative thing to take people from their ability to go as a collective group and worship, right? That seems like a negative thing. And there are massive negative things to it. But it also implies that you can't directly do this work. I never want to be this for you. That's why I actively make sure you get that you have this. But some people use spirituality to avoid shifting. 
It's like I can keep grabbing the optimism of the now, which is actually this future concept of now, to stay there and never hit my treasure chest. So what if, as it seems like they're taking away your ability to connect with God, they're actually taking your middleman away. And it's going to speed it up. Many people's authority was their job. A lot of people left their job. Feel the collective consciousness of that. No matter what you feel about the mandates or anything like that, know that in New York, 72,000 hospital workers quit. So they've left what they thought was their highest. And now you're seeing direct connections with source all over the world. So you're holding on to the old way is almost going to make you in the smaller group because the God way is becoming the majority. Are you with me? It's, it's, we're hitting a tipping point where the, the, it'll be the norm to have opened up your treasure chests and become the all that isness. And it will be the small, it'll be a smaller and smaller dissolving like a tiny ice cube in water, faster and faster dissolving to hold on to your old way that says, I am this job. I mean, it's so funny because if you think of what I've done for a living for the last 10 years, I've been helping people see that they're even more than their job or that they're more than their relationship. And now the universe is like making that happen. Right? It's like, for some people, they're just letting go. And then what, what happens when you have this collective suddenly go to the most amazing place in the world? The best place in the world is when you finally realize you have nothing to lose. What type of awakening happens when you have nothing to lose? It's just down to you and God. And you're, you're not sitting here protecting that old way. You're not protecting the cars in the garage or, you know, how big your house is or your bank account. You're just like finally living right on the edge with God. Often against people with a ton to lose. And all life's doing is going, I'm just going to get everyone to lose everything and then just finally see that they were more powerful without it. And then you can have whatever you want, but it doesn't complete you. It doesn't add anything. You go higher up that frequency, you need less. You need less money. You need less stuff. You need less food as you go up. There's more fasting, there's more presence, there's more God. It's just down to you and this actual thing. You've let go of the authority of everything but the truth of you.